I'm, I'm Reed Melton. I served in India 1965 to 1967 in a little village called Soroli Majagawa near uh, the center of India, near a, a big town or 40 miles from a town called Jabalpur. My name is Bev Pitner and I was in India uh, 18, 1965 to 1967. Uh, my husband then uh, was in poultry and I was in nutrition and the care midday meal program. My name is Philip Crump and I live here in Santa Fe in the Peace Corps. I served in North India in Karnal, Haryana, halfway between New Delhi and Chandigarh. And I arrived there in 66. I actually left a little early. I left in 67. It seemed a little bit oddball, but a friend was asking me what kind of, what sort of changes took place in me, large and small, as a result of being in India. And I was, I just, I realized that I have a visceral reaction, negative reaction, when I see shoes on top of a book. And it was something that I learned in India where books are sacred, knowledge is sacred, and shoes are defiling. And um, I just, I have this, as I say, a visceral reaction to that, and I just, I can't do it. My name is Jack Timmins. I was a volunteer in India, um, 1966 to 68. Uh, I was responsible for drilling large capacity irrigation wells and repairing vertical turbine pumps. Whereabouts in India? Oh, a, a community called Yamnanagar, about 120 miles north of Delhi. My name is Ruth Alaband. I served in India from 1966 to 1968. My project was community development. I was in the India 34 group and I was stationed in Jhansi district, Chirgaon Jila, in the village of Jeria. My name is Dennis Ruff. I was in India 1966 to 1968. I worked in a poultry project in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, my name is Janet Gregg. When I was a Peace Corps volunteer, I was Janet Wilson because, um, anyway, and in, uh, I served in India in the state of Andhra Pradesh in the town of Venkatagiri, which is just um, very south in the state, just north of Madras. And it was called Madras then, today it is Chennai. I met my husband, I, my name is Janet Gregg, um, and I met my husband in the Peace Corps, and we were married in South India after we'd been there for a year. And I think the story that's most compelling to me is, we went back for our 40th wedding anniversary, and we went back to the village that we'd served in, though he didn't, he would agree he didn't last the first three months. Um, he went off and dug wells in North India, and I stayed in the village. And when we arrived there, we were invited by the, the local politicians who were Congress Party people, who were also small princes from the original princely states. And so they were very well landed, wealthy people, had lived in a palace that was um, big as Peace Corps volunteers. I think we thought we were going to be in little huts and we ended on the second floor of this huge dilapidated palace. Um, there were five of us living together. We shared the rooms with rats and bats. Um, our meals were cooked by the palace kitchen. They delivered um, meals to us every day, the same meal every day. We were compelled to find another place to live because we didn't like living on the second floor looking down at people. And we also wanted to just a different place. But the story that I think is most interesting to me is that this family were very conservative Hindus and the women practiced purda, which is similar to the Muslim custom of women traveling outside their family in um, burqas or covered completely. The women um, in the family, I, I met them, uh, met their daughters, the Raja's daughters, but the daughters had never met their male cousins, never met their male uncles. The, the Raja's wife had never met her brother-in-law, and so there was this very 
uh, private sequestered sense of how the women lived their lives. Forty years later, I go back to the, we go back to visit these people with whom we'd work and whom actually the one man, the young man, ended up walking me down the aisle when I was married. So it was a very special connection with them. We went back to the village and found um, the young man who'd walked me down the aisle, now a much older man. Um, and he was the only one left in the palace, himself and his grandson. Um, and five women who kept them going, fed them and kept things sort of tidy. But his wife had moved to the city, his two daughters had been very well educated, though they hadn't been educated in public schools. Their education was such that they went to university, one ended up in um, the legislature, another is married to a doctor. And so they now live in the city. His wife was in the city for medical care, but so in this big space, you have two people left. And the transformation that took place in those women's, the family's life, I think, is the thing that impressed me the most, that um, they had become more urban. They'd expanded their horizons. Um, his grandchildren were, were doing very different things than his grandfather and other people had expected him to do. But the interesting question of the grandson who commuted between Hyderabad and Venkatagiri was to say to him, so what are you doing here? And he looked at us and he probably was in his early 30s and he says, my family has been here for a thousand years. How can I not be here? So though modernity had pulled, I wouldn't say they pulled the family apart because they were all connected still, but it had had a huge impact on the lives of the women and then on how the family maintains itself in the 21st century. Um, so that's, that's the story that comes to my mind. Fantastic. Thank you. Very good. I'm Wiley Gregg. I was in uh, India 28, the 28th group in, in the country of India, assigned to the state of Andhra Pradesh as a health inspector. The only complication was that one of the other volunteers assigned me to me is now my wife and I was uh, separated from her for a year until we got married in Madras uh, a year into our program and then um, have, are still together. My name is Frank Marcigliano. I served in India, uh, right for India, from 1966 to 1968 with India 36. I did, uh, at the time, water development, blasting wells, uh, left a lot of holes in the ground. When I left, brought a lot of water to uh, Raipur. Felt very good about it, and, uh, and it was uh, probably one of the greatest experiences of my life. My name is Rose Wills. And I was in India, um, India 36, from actually Christmas 1966 through 1968. And I was stationed at an agricultural university in Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. I think what is really interesting to me is that I have been back to India a couple of times and the last time I was there was in 2006 and I went back to the university where I worked and I went back to uh, my house in the staff colony where I lived and um, I went to the university and talked to people that were there. I was trying to find people that I knew when I lived there and of course most of them are gone.